Hey there, okay, we continue our series on Stoicism, going through the Enchiridion in this translation, How to be Free by Professor A. A. Long, and today, so far I've been doing one chapter at a time, and I will definitely continue doing that, except that today I thought we would do two chapters, because they're not very long and they, they seem closely related, so I thought it would make sense to do them both. So, chapters 12 and 13, I start with 12. If you want to make progress, and for the record, when Epictetus says progress, what he means is making progress in the way of Stoicism, becoming a Stoic, okay? If you want to make progress, dismiss this kind of reasoning. If I neglect my business, I will have nothing to live on. Or if I don't punish my slave, he will be no good. It is better to starve to death in a calm and confident state of mind than to live anxiously amidst abundance. And it is better, also, for your slave to be bad than for you to be unhappy. So make a start with the little things, like some oil being spilled or some wine being stolen, and then tell yourself, this is the price one pays for not getting worked up, the price for tranquility. Nothing comes free of charge. When you summon your slave, reflect that he is quite capable of not responding, or, if he does respond, that he may do none of the things you want. In any case, he is too unimportant for your own tranquility to depend on him. We continue with chapter 13. If you want to make progress, don't mind appearing foolish and silly where outward things are concerned, and don't wish to appear an expert. Even if some people think you are somebody, distrust yourself. It is not easy, you can be sure, to keep your own will in harmony with nature and simultaneously secure outward things. If you care about the one, you are completely bound to neglect the other. Okay, let us start with chapter 12. Progress. Prokopse. All right? Making progress. Becoming a Stoic. Being a Stoic. Using the Stoic thought to be in control of your mind. What is something that is very, very important when it comes to being a Stoic? Guarding your tranquil state of mind. If you lose it, if you become frustrated or angry or upset, you are hampering your progress, your progression along the way of Stoicism. Because being a Stoic means keeping that emotionally, psychologically even keel. Once you start to get upset over things, angry over things, you will always suffer. Your mood will decline, you will start to feel bad, you get irritable, and you will not achieve your life of eudaimonia, your rich and fulfilling life. Because for that life of eudaimonia, you need to be tranquil. You need your tranquil state. Now, if that is the case, if we all agree on that and we say, sure, I want to be a Stoic, I want to keep that tranquil mind, then there are some things that may necessitate a change in how you approach life. And one of those things, and that is something that, that I, for example, have been working on a lot in the past time, or the, the, the recent times, is not getting upset by irrelevant things. Now, of course, being upset is being human. But there are always things that will frustrate us, that will make us annoyed or angry. But you have to be able to snap out of that as soon as you can. If you truly want to follow this path of Stoicism, that is what you must do. You must be able to say, okay, okay, wait, wait, I regroup myself, I'm sorry, I got frustrated, I'm back. Very important. Because as long as you remain in your state of anger, of frustration, of being upset, you are not tranquil. And as soon as that tranquility is gone, your eudaimonia is gone. So that's something you need to do. And the, 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 the simplest way I can express it is to use a common English expression, don't cry over spilled milk. And that is pretty much what Epictetus is saying here. 
Um, it is better to starve to death in a calm and confident state of mind than to live anxiously amidst abundance. So that's what I just said. You cannot get upset over things. You must keep that tranquility, even if you do so in the face of adversity, even if the world around you may be crumbling, but you are calm. And that's very important. Now, as this, this spilled milk, uh, he says so, right? He says, so make a start with the little things, like some oil being spilled or some wine being stolen. And then tell yourself, this is the price one pays for not getting worked up, the price for tranquility. Nothing comes free of charge. No, there are no free lunches. And for your mental health, there definitely are no free lunches. Working on your mental health, working on being tranquil, working on doing the right thing, working on being in charge of your emotions and your feelings is hard work and you can't slip up. You will. You will slip up because that is human too. You'll make a mistake. You will become frustrated or angry one day. But you have to be able to snap out of it. And it's a continuous effort. You cannot do a little bit. You must do it all the way. It's the only way to obtain your eudaimonia. So start thinking about the small things. I used to get upset. I would spill something, a cup of tea, whatever. I would get angry. It doesn't really make sense, does it? It was just tea. But I think there will be more people watching this video who know that feeling. Because you get frustrated, you have to clean up the mess, it's so annoying. But it doesn't really matter. And here's the worst thing. If spilled milk upsets you so much, imagine anything serious happening in your life. And imagine how much more that would upset you. Something really serious, something nasty, something unpleasant. So if you start practicing on the small things, which is something I have been doing, you may find that the harder things in life become a little easier too, because you are more practiced. You have practiced your mind, and that's a very psychological thing. We can train our minds to do things, to feel what we want to feel or do what we want to do. And if you start with the small things, oh, I knocked over a cup of tea. I clean it up and it's okay. Just the other day I broke a cup. Well, I kind of like that cup. Who cares? It's gone pointless to get angry, right? It's just a small thing. So a very, very important point. And here again, I think we have to come back to this very central point in Stoicism of some things are within your control and some things are outside of your control, right? And we, I've already said, those things that are outside of your control, it's pointless to worry about them or get upset or angry over them because they're outside of your control. But then some things are within your control. Should you get angry over those things? Well, not really. There, too, it's an important thing to keep that even keel and that tranquil state of mind. But what is kind of connected to this is the concept of picking your battles. That's another thing you can practice. You can really disagree with people on things and then get into a discussion which may turn into an argument and the result of that invariably is, invariably is that you start to feel bad because you've been in an argument with people. So one thing that you can ask yourself is, is this a discussion I'm really willing to have? And if it's not, then maybe it's time to say, let's not talk about this. Not right now. Let it go. And the advantage of that is that, again, you guard that tranquil state of mind. Now, something is not, sometimes that may not be possible. Sometimes you may have to discuss something you don't like on the spot, and there's no two ways about it. You just have to do it right there and right then. And those are the times you have to be particularly careful. Because it's in those situations that it's easy to, to quote-unquote, lose your mind and get frustrated, get angry. But that's why you start by practicing on spilled milk, right? Because if you can keep your calm with the spilled milk, and you do it often enough, it will also be easier, not easy, easier to stay calm, to not get frustrated, to not get angry as you're having a difficult discussion with someone. 
And the result is a tranquil mind, a focused mind, and the life of Evdemonia. Now we continue. Right? Slightly difficult, 13th chapter. If you want to make progress, don't mind appearing foolish and silly where outward things are concerned and don't wish to appear an expert. Even if some people think you are somebody, distrust yourself. It is not easy, you can be sure, to keep your own will in harmony with nature and simultaneously secure outward things. If you care about the one, you are completely bound to neglect the other. So again, we talk about prokopse, right? Making progress. What do we have to say about that? Well, I think when you are focusing on your inward developments, as we are doing, we're trying to adopt a, a stoic way of living, right? You are focusing on your, your internal development, the way you are changing, say, your thought patterns, the way you feel about things or think about things. But then you may have to neglect external things. Maybe it's not really possible to do that and gain or amass huge riches and do those sorts of things. Those two things are not really compatible. How many times have you heard someone say, if I had his money, I could do things my way. Hashtag Johnny Cash. Now, interesting thought, but it has to be one or the other. I'm not saying you cannot uh, ha have a lot of money and, and, and be satisfied, but be careful of these external things. Be mindful. What is more important, and that's what Epictetus said in the, in the previous chapter, right? It is better to starve to death in a calm and confident state of mind than to live anxiously amidst abundance. So that's one point. But that, to me, is not the most interesting point he's trying to make here. What you're trying to do, working on yourself, may appear foolish to other people, right? Because they may say, why are you focusing on that stuff so much? Why aren't you thinking about your job? Why aren't you thinking about your career? Well, because you need to be of sound mind to have a career in the first place. That is why. And here's the second thing. Other people's thoughts are not within your control. So it doesn't matter what they say or think about you. If this is a path you want to follow, that's the decision I made. I want to follow this path of Stoicism because I think it's giving me a lot. I don't really care if people say, yeah, well, that's stupid, it's ancient philosophy, why are you doing this? Because I do. And your thoughts don't really matter because I can't control your thoughts. And if it's outside of my control, I can't worry about it, remember? Dispreferred and different. And the final thing I really enjoyed was that statement about being an expert. How many people do you know who go about and tell everyone, oh, I'm, a, I'm an expert of this, I'm, I'm an expert. But are we ever? Are we ever really an expert? You may know a lot of things about something, does that make you an expert? And I don't want to get into a semantic discussion here, but I always, I always object to that a bit. Nobody really ever is an expert. You may know a lot about something, but what does it matter? It's just a word. Do you really need to be an expert, or do you just happen to know something about something? I enjoyed that. There's always more to learn, and that applies to anything. No matter how much you know, there is always more to learn. And the same thing about Stoicism. There's always more to learn, more to explore, more to enjoy, and more to be in control of what is going on in your life. Not an expert. So, in my mind, and I think in the Stoics' mind, Evdemonia, this rich and fulfilling life that kind of depends on you focusing on your internal tranquility. And that may be at the cost of thinking about other external things. I want this beautiful house and I want the car. Yeah, it may be one or the other. But I genuinely believe, and there are going to be people who disagree with me on this, I genuinely believe that your mental health your tranquility up here is more important than the big house or the fantastic career. Both would be nice, but if I were to have to pick between a fantastic career or a completely tranquil and satisfied mind, I'll be fair. I'll pick tranquility. Because even with the greatest job in the world, if it's war up there, you're screwed. No two ways about it. So, focus on that. Your internal tranquility, and then see what happens. I'll return soon.
with another set of thoughts about Stoicism. And in the meanwhile, I hope this was useful, and I'm glad to see you later. Bye-bye.